right after last night, um, kind of a response game for you guys, and you did that. You responded and uh, got a win against a good team. Um, so take me through kind of the ups and downs of the last 24 hours and, um, you know, able to get the win this afternoon. Yeah, these these Friday, Saturday games are something else. I mean, you know, it's not bad to do it in the non-conference slate to do a Friday, Saturday tilt, but to have to do these during conference is new for everybody. But, um, you know, SWU yesterday was – I mean, played. We we did not play very well, and they played very well, and that's very obvious in the stat box. You know, defensively, I was very disappointed in how we defended. I was disappointed in how we rebounded. Um, I was disappointed in our tempo, our energy. I mean, it was just about every everything we could do that wouldn't help us win a game. We did, and so you know, talking after the game last night about you know we don't want this to turn into two, and you know, and then you know, real obviously getting hurt in that game. Uh, put a lot of pressure on you know our young guys. You know Trent's still technically a freshman. Um, you know Bradley Haskell, Javante Waverly, Nigel Verdeer. You know and and as far as the leadership standpoint, it put a lot more pressure on Spence and Dion and Rel or excuse me Snipe. So uh, you know I, I was very very proud about how we came out and I thought we really guarded Belmont Abbey and they still shot the tar out of it. But they're one of the they're literally like the top five top three offensive efficiency in the country right now. So. I was very proud of how we responded, um, especially without one of your staple players. And, you know, hopefully we can get him healthy because, like I said, we only got four games left of the season. And there's a, there's, a, there's going to be a big difference if we can take care of business in these next four games or if we can't as far as our destiny and what we've set forth as far as goals for the year. And either one of you all want to touch on that as well? Uh, I would say, like, last night I agree with him. It was, like, disappointing and embarrassing because this is, like, the first game that we've really had where we've been able to have crowds and people here. And when we come and play, we disappoint ourselves and then we disappoint the people who support us the most, which is the people of the school, community, alumni weekend and stuff. So we knew we had to bounce back today. And one of the good things about a turnaround is that even though we lost last night, we're able to bounce right back. And it kind of shows the maturity of what our team can do moving forward because we're going to be – Having games like this, we have to be able to bounce back, especially as we get later in in the season. Yeah, just piggyback off what he said. You know, it just shows um, our mentality as a team, how to just respond, see what we can do, because we're going to be put in certain situations, you know, if we get further down the road in March, where we're going to have to, you know, dig deep, um, quick turnaround, stuff like that. So it was good. And your previous loss in November, you had a week afterward. This one, 19 hours later, you were on the court. So how different was this time around? Well, I mean, from a coaching perspective, it, as much as you want to perseverate on the previous game, you can't. Um, and uh, as much as you want to get them in the morning at 5 a.m. and go through rebounding drills, it, it, you just can't. So, you know, basically we just, after the game, talked and, uh, you know, talked about the bad and the good and and uh, and what we have to do to, to – move away from it and then as soon as we got done we we got our pasta and sat down and did fil scout and film for Bel Belmont Abbey so there's a, it's, it's a t it's a good and bad as in as a coach you get so frustrated and there's a lot of things you want to get your hands on in the practice um, that they didn't do but also for the players it gives them an ability to to respond and, and really challenge them and their mentality and their maturity to to to, to come out and play against in my opinion a, an NCAA tournament caliber team in Belmont Abbey and a lot of times this season, you've had those early second half runs. This one kind of started late in the first half. I think it was 7-0 to end the half. Um, so how much momentum did you carry into halftime and then able to take that back out onto the court for the second half? I, I was just proud of how we how hard we played. I didn't feel like we played hard yesterday. And I think in, as far as me as a coach and this program and, and as storied as we've been, I think that's the most disrespectful thing you can do at UNCP is not play to your full effort level. And I didn't think we did that yesterday. But I thought today, whether we were up or down at halftime, I thought we played as hard as we physically could in that first half. So I was just happy that we competed. We we really gave them as much as we could. And then, you know, at halftime, we were able to adjust a little bit and, and uh, push the lead out. And then um, starting the second half, um, First of all, Spencer, that dunk to start on the first possession, I mean, that kind of got the crowd back into the game after, you know, the break there. Yeah. Um, take me through that possession. I don't know. We came out at halftime, and I had a conversation with the coaches about a couple of plays that I thought we should run, and one is, like, we came to the conclusion of which one we were going to run. I'm not going to tell you because people can watch this. <laughs> but, we, uh, but, you know, we, we, we called our play and everything, and uh, I looked at Dion. I was like, hey, 
Like, you know, we work on it in practice. I'm like, I'll be there. You threw it. I was there. So, I mean, it's a good jump. Like you said, he carried on. Like, regardless, we played hard, and we knew second half was our time to step up. And just to start off with that type of emphatic play, like, it got everybody going because after that, we're – we're having steals, we're making, we're diving on the floor, we're going threes, we're crashing, we're rebounding. You can slowly tell that we're slowly taking over the game in that second half with how hard we played in the first half. And in the second half, it kind of just went our way. And I'm happy with that and the way our team and coaches did. And Trent, 19 points and uh, <laughs> 19 points. And you got to the free throw line a good bit um, in this game. so. Take me through kind of what went well for you there offensively. Um, to start off, it was Tyrell, you know, with him being down and being the leader. He was in my ear the whole game before the game, just telling me, you know, play my game, you know, take my shots, you know, just lead the team. So I just had that in my back of the head the whole time. I trust my work. So I was just going out there playing, doing what coach, you know, would want us to do. Yeah, and coach, you touched a little bit about the freshman making a big impact with um, Tyrell out the last, uh, last game. and. Um, talk a little bit about how much Javante and Bradley have meant to this team and then for the players, how have you meshed with him as part of the upbringing in the, uh, in the program? Well, you know, I think one thing we've been able to do bringing in high, a lot of high school players is having strong senior leadership and them learning from them. So guys like Trent, guys like Vante, guys like Bradley get to learn from Jordan Ratliff and Tyrell Kirk. And Tyrell Kirk got to learn from uh, Brandon Watts and Nigel Grant, and and Brandon Watts got to learn from Griffin Pittman and Quamaine Rose. So it's this it's this this UNCP brotherhood that keeps passing down this this you know whether it's about on the court off the court this advice and things you need to do to get better and how you can have a successful career here. So the guys that molded Tyrell now Tyrell's taking that and molding these young guys and hopefully by the time they're juniors and seniors we've got freshmen here that they're. You know, introducing to how we do things in our culture and Braves basketball. So it's incredible to see it, and it's incredible to see guys like Tyrell or Spencer. Where Spencer, same thing with guys like Kia and guys like Nigel and guys like Carson that helped Spencer come along as well. Um, I think it's amazing to see these guys develop and grow into the leader leaders that they are and the players that they are today. And I can only hope that Bradley, Trent, Vonte, Nate Dunlop, Jakari, they take all this and appreciate that they're able to play with these guys because before you know it, I mean, four games left in the regular season, it's going to be over. So, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful every day to come into work to be able to have the seniors that we have on this team from a leadership perspective. And you got to thank the guys, like the alumni that were here tonight, that, that, that molded these guys and the guys before them and the guys before them to get us to this point. Anything I want to add? You, you, you can talk about it. Oh, you yeah. Um, it's just a brotherhood. You know, that's the first thing Coach was telling me about coming here was the brotherhood. and the love you get from the family and, you know, with the young cats with like Bradley and Vonte, um, I actually had a previous relationship with them. I played them throughout high school. So it just makes it that much easier when we're on the court. We know where each other at, you know, off the court, we everybody tight. So that, you know, just follows on to the court with us. That's all I have. Thanks, guys. Thank Appreciate you. It.